After a little bit of a break, I think it's time to jump back into Coral Island for my first summer in the fully released game. If you didn't see Spring, you might want to check the card on screen now, otherwise, let's not waste any time. My summer started with a visitor, Luke. Luke's dog, Taco, is apparently quite the adventurous little entree. He's off on a quest somewhere, but I don't care, because it's the start of a new season. My scythe was being upgraded, so I cut down all the dead crops by hand before checking the summer sesogen to make sure I bought the right crops to complete my donation. I picked up my scythe from Pablo, bought, then planted a whole bunch of the summer crops, then headed back to Pablo to upgrade my hoe. I saw Ben being forced into a Resident Evil 7 style dinner party by Bree and Luke, helped Archie find a rock that looked like a butt, and met Nina, who only visits in summer. I'm not sure I would ever marry someone just because of their hat, but I'm not saying I won't do that. Summer 2nd was rainy, which meant the chickens were stuck in the coop today, but since my barn was finished, I went to pick up a cow and a sheep. I wasn't sure what to name the cow at first, but since it was a rainy day and I had just looked at rocks yesterday, I settled on Tien. The sheep was named Danny, after my wife. They always are. Here's a question for you. What theme do you usually pick for your animals? I usually go with foods. Anyway, I met Kenny outside, and he was surprised that one of his cows walked out of an open gate in the rain. Not the brightest bulb, this guy. And his hat doesn't stand a chance against Nina's. After that, I collected some resources in the mines and made a little bit of progress underwater with my newly upgraded silver scythe. I really like staying on top of the tool upgrades in general, and the scythe is extra important. I cracked a bunch of geodes to start day 3 of summer, and I got one donation right off the bat. That means all I have left is the red barrel. Not bad. I realized I had never actually been inside the pufferfish building, so I remedied that today and met Reyna, who I am convinced will someday be a marriage candidate. You're kidding, right? After that, I broke into a parent-teacher conference and learned that Ollie probably has undiagnosed ADHD, so not only did I break FERPA, I probably also broke HIPAA. Didn't I do that in spring, too? I spent the rest of my day grinding in the mines. I made it to level 25 in the wind cavern, then headed back to pick up more bronze and silver so I could keep crafting bombs. It's just objectively superior to using my pickaxe now. The fourth started with a grand event. The Founders Hall in the museum was finally opening. I don't think this cutscene was complete when I played in Early Access, so it was cool to see the statues of all the people who backed Coral Island. I've been watching The Legend of Korra lately though, and this place kind of reminded me of that sanctuary in the Air Temple. Spooky. I moved my coop over to its permanent home today, but I didn't realize I couldn't place my barn on top of grass, so that'll have to wait I guess. Instead, I half-heartedly advised Luke not to worry about his dog too much, and then saw a cutscene where Mayor Connor told everyone that Pablo is the best, and the rest of us suck at volunteering. The cutscenes would not stop today though, and I found Taco on the beach, presumably eating sand. I helped enable Alice's introversion by telling her it's totally cool to email instead of call people when your stuff doesn't show up on time, and I took some pictures of Macy to send to her mom, proving that I am the superior photographer. On Summer 5, I organized the section that will ultimately house my animals and moved the barn to its spot right near the coop. Perfect. The reason those buildings had to go was because it was time to start a new crop field expansion. My two current plots can grow about 128 crops at a time, but we really need to pump those numbers up if we're going to make any sort of meaningful progress. Zara rescued me from three of the easiest enemies in the game on my way to the mines today, proving that even the mightiest of kings would fall without their queens. Or, or something. And then I blasted through the rest of the mines, making it all the way to level 40 and freeing Gru, the wind giant. More importantly though, the fire mine is open now. The giants gave me some cryptic warnings about the dangers of fire, but didn't ultimately stop me. So I headed into the fire shaft to gather osmium ore. This was a huge money maker for me in early access, and even though the prices have been nerfed, I still made about 5,300 coins overnight on mining alone, so I think it'll still be a solid supplement. I had my first harvest of the summer on the 6th. Wheat and some gardenias, which I threw into a bee house to start making some honey. Danny the sheep produced a large wool for me, literally before I got a small one, so that was neat. I saw Archie and Taco playing with Gong the giant in the town square, and I think I gave Alice the ick a little because I was talking to Gong after the family left and she couldn't see him. Since I had some spare cash from the osmium ore yesterday, I upgraded my backpack to 30 slots and bought nearly as many melons as I could afford to fill my ever-expanding field. Even with the 51 I bought today, I would still need another 37 just to fill out my third scarecrow's worth of field. That meant I was off to the fire shaft again, where I made my way down from 5 to 20 today and collected 80 osmium ore, of which I sold 55, and I got a brand new sword. I decided to start a tree farm in the southeast corner of my farm on the 7th. I was just getting annoyed with the trees outside my house and I wanted to get rid of them soon. I also collected all of my geodes, coffers, and fossils to process today, but the blacksmith was closed. Still, I stopped at the lab and got the fossils done at least, which brought me up to 95 donations. Not bad. 
With the Osmium Ore money from yesterday, I bought enough melons to finish out the rest of my new field, then bought one of every single fruit tree Sam sold this season. In early access, I didn't realize you had to actually, like, water these, but I wouldn't make that mistake again. I plopped these down right below my field for now, though I don't really like their positioning, to be honest. Gong sent me his quest to go undercover in the town on the 8th, but I don't really care about that, and I promptly forgot about it, as my second letter was an ominous invitation slash demand to meet someone on the beach tomorrow. I also forgot about that right away. Today I harvested some hot peppers, made sure to actually water my trees, stopped by the mines to collect more silver to make explosives with, cracked all of my geodes, and got super excited when I saw a garnet because I thought it was a red barrel. But no. Oh, and I started my axe's silver upgrade. I decided to see how effective some bug traps in a cemetery would be, certainly that's not blasphemous or anything, and then I broke the 100 donation mark in the museum and received fish tacos. I think this happened to me in early access too. <laughs> Why fish tacos for 100 donations? Couldn't it be something really cool? Well after that it was back to the mines for more resources, and I realized at 11pm that I had never cared for my animals today. Sorry guys! Some sunflowers came in on summer 9th, which meant the only thing I still needed to complete the summer offering was a single blueberry. Very cool. A small wool from Danny today also meant that I was halfway through the barn animals offering, though I couldn't do much about needing goat's milk right now. They're not available at my current down rank. I tried to start a house upgrade today too, but I thought it only needed 5 bronze bars, so I showed up without everything I needed. But that was fine because I could go check on my cemetery bug traps. They did okay. With the correct supplies in hand, I returned to Dinda and started my house upgrade for real. The rest of my day was spent underwater collecting more kelp. I needed both bronze and silver kelp, and I continued to activate more solar orbs since I was down there anyway. I remembered really struggling with hardwood in early access, so I bombed down some logs on the morning of Summer 10 to get the materials I would need to upgrade my tools past silver. My axe was the first tool I wanted to get to gold, since that would allow me to get more hardwood, and I needed that for the other tools. It made sense at the time. The cemetery was chock full of delicious buggies for me this morning, so I snagged those on my way to process some fossils and upgrade my fruit seed quality at the lab. That cost me a pretty penny though, so it was back to the mines where I actually decided to just wrap up the last 10 floors of the fire shaft today. I got to the bottom where I met Chieftain and found the final cursed seal, and behind the seal was... Gyu, the fire giant that everyone thought was responsible for turning the other giants to stone. Huh. Well, I broke the seal and Gyu told us that it might have actually been a different giant named Gort who did all of this. I knew all this from early access, but this was as far as the quest went back then, so I was excited to see what kind of new content was available. After I gathered more resources, that is. I got that same vaguely threatening letter on the 11th, as well as a reminder that the animal festival was starting at 9am the next day. Uh, I don't have a pet yet. <laughs> I did, however, have my first blueberry harvest this morning, which meant I could complete the summer sesogen, which gave me eight tomato seeds. Okay, that's cool, I guess. I had actually hit mining level 10 overnight, which was easily my highest level skill. I haven't talked about it much, but every other level you get a skill point, which you can use to do things like increase the prices of associated goods, or possibly get double when you harvest something, or increase its quality, that kind of thing. I stopped by the Giants Village to try to follow up on the Gyu info, but I got stuck in the cutscene with Gong, who wants me to collect a bunch of items so we can all prank the humans. Sure, buddy. I'll get right on that. After that, I stopped by the Town Hall to find Scott bricking Millie's computer and then just kinda hoping she wouldn't notice. But I also bought a pet home and then went to pick a puppy. I bought Bode? Bode? I, I don't know. And I didn't realize I could rename the pets, so I really struggled with this before ultimately deciding on Hoyd. I spent my afternoon and evening gathering resources underwater and in the mines, but I also made it to family trivia night, even though no one sent me an invitation. Hoyd showed up on the morning of summer 12th, which was good since I would need his help for the animal festival that started at 9 today. My house upgrade was also done, which meant it was time to decorate. Pretty swanky. The animal festival was mostly the same as it was in early access, with one big change. After talking to all the villagers, I tried my hand at the bull riding challenge, and it was much easier than I remembered. I actually hadn't failed one input by the time I broke the first place record, so I just kind of sat awkwardly in my chair and didn't press any buttons after that. Tian and I didn't fare quite so well in the cow competition though, and I only ended up making it to the second round. But I think that's pretty normal for Tian to dip out after the first third of the story, at least chronologically. The chicken staring contest was next, and although it was slightly unnerving to be challenging a chicken named Lily, when the real Lily was a spectator two feet away, Adolin took the prize today, meaning she could lay golden eggs, starting tomorrow. 
Despite Hoyd and I having some sort of supernatural bond that transcends time and space, we couldn't quite take the win in the pet race, the only new competition at the festival. We made it all the way to the final round, but a last minute mix up on my part meant we actually ended last in that round. Sorry, little dude. We'll get him next time. And that was the Animal Festival. Lots of goodies for participating and winning challenges, and a good opportunity to make friends and play minigames. I loved it. Chieftain surprised me on the 13th with the Architects Table. This awesome little device lets you move anything on your farm, for a price, to another spot on the farm. I could use this to move trees, decorations, or even currently growing crops if I wanted to mess around with layouts later. It's a really cool addition. I swapped my axe in for my scythe at the blacksmith today since the trash underwater is getting harder to deal with, then headed to the giant's village where I still didn't get the next scene for that quest line. Weird. I finally made it to the beach that evening after receiving those threatening letters every day for the past week and found Suki and Ben there enjoying a beautiful sunset. I also met with Alice on the docks around the corner where she was contemplating reincarnation in our past lives. I told her I was probably a fish, but I would have told her I was a golden retriever if that was an option. I had to harvest some starfruit by hand on the 14th since my scythe was upgrading and when I tell you I never want to go back. I must have pushed Adolin too far at the animal festival because she was sick this morning. That meant a trip to the ranch where I bought some medicine, but I also snagged two temperature machines which will apparently prevent this from happening again during the summer and winter months. The rest of my day was pretty relaxed though, other than stumbling across Paul and Zoe enjoying a little crab rave. I turned in my pickaxe for its gold upgrade on the 15th of summer and cracked a whole bunch of geodes. I still only needed one red barrel to complete that offering, and once again I got really excited to see a garnet. So excited, in fact, that I ran straight to the temple to offer it up only to realize, again, that I don't need a garnet. Kind of embarrassing, really. I took my newly upgraded gold scythe out for a spin today, spending 12 hours underwater clearing trash and activating more solar orbs, and I ended up with enough donations today to get a bed, chair, and side table from the museum. I think I accidentally got someone else's order too though, because for some reason I had a second bed in my inventory after exiting the decoration mode, so I guess I'm ready for sleepovers. I tried to help Scott, Millie, and Charles move a couch up a set of stairs on the 16th, but since I never really watched Friends, the pivot joke kind of fell flat for me, but they all thought it was absolutely hilarious. I spent 25,000 coins on kitchen appliances today, which is honestly kind of disrespectful, but I didn't worry about doing any actual cooking today because I wanted to get back underwater to clear out more of the ocean. Once again, I spent the vast majority of my day underwater, and I think I'm about three or four more orbs away from the point where early access stopped. So I'm really close to new diving content, and that's super exciting. On the 17th, I decided to go ahead and knock out some of those recipes for the temple. I made a smoothie, some tomato soup, and a sunny side up eggs dish. I need to catch literally any fish for another recipe, but I also need to get my hands on some rice, which is a fall crop. So I guess I didn't really need to get those appliances yet after all. I did, in fact, finish up the rest of the diving section I was working on today, which meant I finally got to see the Merfolk Kingdom. I completed a short puzzle outside the gates, which was apparently supposed to keep out anyone that's not worthy, but come on. Anyway, after the puzzle, I headed inside where this absolute jabroni tried to threaten me before Denali, one of the merfolk I encountered a few weeks ago, stood up for me and helped me get access to speak with King Krakatoa and Queen Nanda Devi. These two were not fans of surface dwellers, but Ursula over here told them that I was the key to restoring their withered coral tree. Even that wasn't enough though, and I was set to be banished before Princess Miranjani appeared to save my bacon by basically saying the exact same thing that Ursula said. I guess her words hold more weight than their spiritual leader. Denali and Agung, the other merfolk I'd met before, showed me to the barracks where I could sleep, which is weird. But since there was a fast travel spot inside the kingdom, I just pieced out back to my farm for the night. This is so cool. My very first stream of this game was in October of 2022, and it is awesome to see how far we've come. Summer 18th was a big melon day and it was glorious. I also had my first fruit harvest today and I was really excited to drop some fruit off, but they were all bronze quality or lower and I needed them to be silver to donate, so that was a little discouraging. Since it was already late in the month, I loaded up on hot pepper seeds to replace my melons. Those will continue to produce into fall, so they're a safe bet since everything else is either too slow to grow or not valuable enough to really be worth it at this point. I went ahead and started a quality upgrade on my fruit trees since apparently I really need one of those. Then headed back underwater where Ursula, I don't remember her name honestly, performed some sort of ritual which will allow me to enter the caves that I've been seeing during my time cleaning things up. On my way out of the kingdom and into the deep ocean, Princess Miranjani stopped me to give me a stamina fruit which will permanently increase my stamina by 45 points. 
She's obviously already fallen for me, so my route to nobility is clear. Marry the fish, become the king. I traveled further into the deep ocean and acquired my very first gold kelp. This is really important because I'll need it for quality upgrades for my seeds and animals, but it's also required to craft the next level of sprinkler. Those cover 24 tiles instead of 8, so yeah, big improvement. Before heading home for the night, I stopped by one of those caves I unlocked. I'm not sure if there's something I'm missing, but it seems like they're just here to be a place to gather trash and kelp. Presumably because once the ocean is completely clean, it will be harder to find trash, but I'm not sure. More melons on the 19th meant my jam production would continue to carry me through the next several days. I did, however, completely forget to buy more crops to replace all of them, which is pretty embarrassing. At the Sanchez Brothers Blacksmith, I cracked so many geodes and coffers that I actually needed two trips to the museum to unload it all, even after upgrading my backpack a couple days ago. All those donations brought me up to 134, which is wild when you consider I was celebrating 100 donations just about a week and a half ago. I continued my underwater quest, gathering more gold kelp and activating even more solar orbs tonight, but I'm back to needing two hits with my sight, so I might start thinking about an osmium upgrade at some point soon. I bought and planted more hot peppers on summer 20th to replace all those melons I forgot about yesterday. My plan today was to upgrade my barn, but it was a Saturday, so that's not happening. Big news though, I managed to donate enough items to the museum to push my town rank up to D today. This is going much more slowly than it did in early access, but progress is progress. This means new seeds and animals will be available for purchase, as well as things like new clothes and decor. Most importantly though, I can get goats now if I get that barn upgrade. I checked out the new seeds at Sam's, but since it was so late in the season, I only walked away with some rose and lilies. I started a new section for those using some brand new upgraded sprinklers to cover 24 tiles with one unit. It is, it's so beautiful. I also slapped down a couple of those sprinklers by my trees to completely cover all of those, so I can just put my watering can away for now. Then it was back to the ocean to replace some of the silver kelp I had used crafting all those sprinklers. On the 21st, Yuri stopped by to collect some medical information. I thought this was going to be like a romance scene, the young doctor making a house call and all that, but uh, she actually dropped a picture with two little girls and told me she always carries it because any day could be your last. And yeah, that took the wind out of my sails for sure. I cleared out all the hardwood on my farm in preparation for an upgraded barn, but there weren't enough logs to quite cover it. That's kind of a problem. I can't get more hardwood until I get into the mid forest where they regenerate every couple days or so, and I need to complete six whole offerings to do that. I kind of thought I had hit it already, but apparently not. On the bright side, I got to help Archie sort his rock collection that afternoon, so the day wasn't a complete flop. I started an upgrade on my hay for better animal products, then I headed back underwater to clear out more trash, activate more solar orbs, and collect more kelp to bolster my inventory. On the 22nd, which is day 50 overall for those of you counting at home, I was starting to get frustrated that my kegs weren't working. There had been wheat in them for days, but I couldn't remove the beer to sell. I tried moving them, but that didn't work. Turns out that closing the game would fix it though, so I ended up doing that overnight. I made a few offerings today, knocking out the rare resources set completely, which should open up the mid forest for me tomorrow for that hardwood I need. Then I bought everything that Gong needed for the super disguise to work, and we introduced my new best friend, Handsome, to Mayor Connor. That was it though, uh, other than resource gathering. I did, in fact, unlock the mid forest overnight, so after doing my normal chores around home, I cut down some hardwood logs, which allowed me to reach the 40 hardwood that I needed to upgrade my barn. That'll be done in a couple of days, but in the meantime, I gathered more silver kelp today to replace the ones I'd been using for both sprinklers and lab upgrades. All the seed and hay upgrades are costing me like 50 to 90 silver kelp each, so I'm going through it way more quickly than I expected. I was starting to get kind of frustrated about this red barrel situation, so I spent six hours in the mines on summer 24th, trying to either find it or more earth geodes to cheese my way into getting one from the blacksmith. I did not find the red barrel, and I only found six geodes, so things are looking a little grim. My afternoon was spent under the water collecting more kelp and clearing trash, and I rounded out my day by cutting down the trees that I've been complaining about for like a month now. I thought about moving my kegs, but I think I need to do some flooring first. I had a huge harvest day on the 25th. Hot peppers, bell peppers, and corn out my ears. Get it? <laughs> Sorry. I tried to intimidate my bee house into producing honey faster, but then realized that my barn upgrade was done. I could buy a goat. I named her Seth, and while I can't possibly get both a large and small goat milk before summer ends, I should be able to finish that bundle pretty early in fall. Next up on the to-do list was a fishing rod upgrade. You have to do this kind of like a tool upgrade now, using kelp essence and wood instead of just buying it and moving on, which kind of stinks. 
But also, apparently Sonny sold out to Pablo and Raphael because his store is listed as the Sanchez Blacksmith in the upgrade menu. Hmm. I gathered Osmium for more money and tried to get more Earth Geodes today, but I only managed to scrounge up two of them this time. My roses were ready on summer 26, and in my humble opinion, there is little more satisfying than clearing out a big field's worth of crops with a scythe. I decided to expand the bee houses since I'd hopefully be growing lots of flowers in fall, and I cleared out some space for a silo in the southwest corner of my farm. I don't really need to interact with this much, and that's a dead area right now anyway, so it's perfect. I finally decided to remove my bug traps from the cemetery today, and I dropped them on the path from my farm to the ranch, where I will surely remember to check them every day. I stopped by the lab to finish up my final silver quality upgrade for my vegetable seeds, then headed to the giant's grotto? Sanctuary? Whatever, the giant's place. Where I still haven't gotten the cutscene from Q, by the way. Anyway, I managed to upgrade the rare drop enchantment on my pickaxe from 40% to 80%, which is kind of ludicrous when you think about it. That means that 4 out of 5 rocks that I break will drop like a fossil or a geode or some ore or whatever. I put that to use right away and literally doubled the amount of earth geodes I had in storage. That's going to make my odds at the red barrel much better in a couple of days. I can't believe I've been chasing this thing all summer. The 27th of summer was the beach cleanup festival, which I had a ton of fun with in early access. I chatted with everyone, of course, then hurried to check out the shops. Pufferfish had some clothes, which was kind of tempting just for the memes, but I only ended up buying a bunch of batteries, a scarecrow, and a snow globe today. And I had actually already donated that snow globe, so that stinks. Despite my IRL physical frailty when it comes to button mashing, I managed to secure first place in the rope tug contest, which won me rope, which isn't completely useless, but it would have been nicer before I finished the mines. I didn't read the instructions and kind of forgot how to play the swimming race, which meant I ended up in dead last, but apparently you can just keep attempting it. So after filling out my stamina bar, I ended up winning that as well, earning me a whole bunch of kelp. Those are the only two events though, I think, so I wrapped up the day by helping my neighbors clean the beach and Denali snuck onto the screen at the end of the day, which I guess could have been foreshadowing if we hadn't already exchanged friendship bracelets. Day 56 was the final day of summer, and I believe it was my first storm of the summer too? Don't quote me on that. I had a few things to harvest today, but my goal was actually to get my red barrel to donate, then catch a bunch of season-dependent critters. After my normal chores, I headed to the blacksmith fully prepared to keep resetting the day until I got my stupid gem, but it was a Sunday, so they were closed. Well, whatever. I picked up my upgraded fishing rod from Sunny, checked my spreadsheets and the altars, and I saw that I needed a lionfish and a silver koi today for fish, a yucca moth for bugs, and a sunflower sea star for sea critters. I started at the lake, catching a whole bunch of chubs and other junk, but did eventually find my koi. Excellent. Then it was down to the beach, where I found a parrot fish, which was ridiculously challenging, but I followed it up with a lionfish. So that's actually all the fish I could reasonably get. I kind of already gave up on the legendaries, to be honest. I headed to the bathhouse in search of a yucca moth, and I'm not sure if this was one, but I definitely flubbed it, which meant that offering was off the table for the year. But I'd already missed something from that bundle in the spring, so I, I wasn't really heartbroken to be honest. I spent the rest of my day hunting the sunflower sea star, but I just wasn't deep enough in the deep ocean to see them yet. So I ended up two for four for the summer specific offerings. Definitely should have started that earlier. My bad. But that was it. My summer was over. I'm excited for fall though, since I'm fully into new content in almost every aspect of the game so far. If you had fun with this one, please consider liking the video and dropping a comment. Either way, I'll see you in the next video.